Hi everyone, it's Tracy. I am a grateful follower of Jesus Christ. I came to celebrate recovery with addictions, methamphetamine, alcohol, and being a sexual abuser. And today I'm still working on some pride issues in my life. How are you doing today? So the summit, the Celebrate Recovery Summit was held in Texas this year. I don't know if you were able to go or not. If you were, then fantastic for you. Uh, I did see some of it online and I thought it was really good. One thing that caught me was when Mac was sharing, he was talking about falling short of the glory of God. And he was saying things like, well, I'm not short on my anger and I'm not short on my lust. I'm not short on the things that brought me to celebrate recovery. So what am I short on? And it was very good talk. If you have an opportunity to check it out and do because Mac is a great speaker. But I began thinking about that even more, about falling short of the glory of God. And, you know, it's not my sin that keeps me from falling short of the glory of God. My sin certainly doesn't help. And your sin certainly doesn't help. But we know that we are saved by faith. By grace you have been saved through faith. It is a work of God. So our salvation is of God and it doesn't really matter how funky and disgusting and sin-filled we are when God saves us. That's not the point. Falling short of the glory of God is what we do in that time. Again, it's not the sin that keeps us from falling short of the glory of God because he saves us in our sin. So what is it that keeps us from falling short of the glory of God? Well, as I began thinking about it and praying about it more and more, um, one of the things that, that came to my mind was the fruit of the Spirit. It's growing in the fruit. Coming out of sin, seeking to relieve myself of sin is a good thing. So praying, going to church, going to recovery, those are all good things. They, they will help us to identify what God wants in our lives, which is fruit. He wants us to be well and holy. He wants us to be at peace, and he wants us not to sin, but that's not what keeps us from falling short. What keeps us from falling short is not knowing what God wants for us. And so there's the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The good old self-control, right? That's part of it. If we can grow the fruit that the Spirit has placed in our heart, we can become more and more living in the glory of what God wants for us while we're still here on earth. How do we do that? How do we bring those fruit to uh, ripeness in our life, that they're good and pleasant for other people? It's continuing to do what you are doing or what you're preparing to do Go into recovery. Start seeking that sanctification part of God by knowing his word, by growing in his word. To love one another and to love yourself. To find joy in your life, even in the middle of the trouble that you're having. The hurt, the habit, or the hang-up that's coming up against your life constantly. It's to find joy in, the, in those moments. And it's not easy to do. This is a list of fruit that God has placed before us in his word. And it's not something that we'll just take and pick up and run with. I've said it before, but if you go to buy fruit somewhere, you're going to go to a store and it's going to be in the produce department. Fruit needs to produce in our life. And the way the fruit produces is by watering it with the word of God, by praying, by tilling that soil of our heart that we can pray earnestly to God. God, I'm not in control, and I can't do this, and I need your help. There's many other ways through the Word of God that we can be shown how to step out of the sin life and reach up to the glory that God would have for us. It's available, and it's there. The self-control part in the fruit is the one that gets me all the time. Because you put a plate of chicken wings in front of me, and I'm probably going to mess them up. I love chicken wings. Uh, some people it's cake. Some people it's 
lust. Others, it's uh, anything that will make them angry, like that guy that cuts them off on the road or the long line in the grocery store. We need to find that self-control in that, looking towards Jesus Christ in it. One of the ways that I've found to help the fruit grow more is to understand the armor of God that he lays out for me. The armor of God, you can find that in Ephesians uh, chapter 6, and it's verse 11. And the armor of God is, he, he tells us to take the, take the belt of truth around our waist. That's the first armor that he gives to us. The truth. Knowing who God is and what he desires for us so that we can be well, so that we can be full of the love, the joy, the peace, and the patience. God desires these things from us. He doesn't desire that, hey, get it right and get it right now. He wants us to grow in him by knowing him. So we take that belt of truth and we put it around our waist, the center point of our body, the balance point of who we are, and we read his word and we fellowship with others and we grow in it. The next one is the breastplate of righteousness. Know that you are righteous because he saved you. Not because of what you've done in the past or what you're going to do in the future. You're righteous in Jesus Christ. Put that on your chest. Why is it the chest plate? Because it's near the heart. You really need to know that. Your love for God will grow when you totally know that he loves you and he saved you because he is God. Not because you are good. But he wants you to be well in this world and so he equips us with these things. The gospel on our feet. We have the word. We know that we are saved by grace through faith, and he wants us to tell other people. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, Revelation 12 11 tells us. So these are things that we need to implement, put on, walk in them, and march forward in this world to grow more in the glory of God. There's the shield of faith, knowing my faith and not letting it be wavered by some other nice faith that's out there, some other thing that sounds good and real easy and pleasant. It's not that. It's faith in Jesus Christ that he died on the cross for our sins so that we could be one with him in heaven. There's the helmet of salvation. To know that you were saved and nothing can take your salvation away. To know it. It's on your head. It's in scrunched in your brain you cannot lose your salvation that should be motivation i know it is for me when i realized through reading the word that my salvation could not be taken away that not even i could throw it away i don't have the power to rip it out of god's hand to know that i am saved has been motivation in my in my life and the last one is the sword of the spirit which is the word of god to know the word of god I have seen so many people come in to celebrate recovery and they grow or they get up from their falling short by understanding the word of God through celebrate recovery and step studies. I've seen it in church too, but I'm more keen to it. I'm more um, hawk-eyed on it in recovery and I think it is fantastic. God wants us to know him. He's a jealous God. And if you draw near to him, he will draw near to you. We don't fall short of the glory of God because of sin. Because all have sinned and all have fallen short of the glory of God. So we need to get up. We need to till the soil that's in our heart so that the fruit of the Spirit will grow. So that we will have more love, more joy, more peace, more patience, more kindness, more goodness, more gentleness, more self-control, more faithfulness. And it will come but it comes by actually working that land in your heart. And sometimes we need to put that armor on. Not sometimes, I say we should always have the armor on, but it's to remember that we do have that armor, that breastplate of righteousness to protect our heart, the helmet of salvation to know that I am saved and I will never not be saved again, that buckle of truth around my waist to know the word of God and who he says I am. And that's the sword of the spirit. That when things come my way, when that guy cuts me off on the road, when there's a long line in the store, when I'm tempted with a plate of chicken wings, the word of God says, I'm better than that. 
and I don't need it, that he is my one and my only and my first love. I hope you will stand up from your falling short, because we all have. So stand up, fruit in your life, and put your armor on. I'm Tracy, and I'm a grateful believer in Jesus. I love you, and God loves you, and there ain't nothing you can do about that either. So get a little joy, love, and peace in your heart. God bless.